everyone. This is Stephanie Krupsack with the Pierrevant Living Women in Wellness podcast. Today we have Jennifer Lavin, owner of Mindful Matters Wellness, doctor of physical therapy, and women's and pelvic health specialist. She is also certified manual therapist, certified dry needling for myofascial trigger point therapist, certified Pilates and yoga teacher, and prenatal through postpartum exercise specialist. So thanks so much for being here today. Thank you. Excited to be on the podcast. Definitely. And you have a beautiful <laughs> space here. So we're at your center today. So yep. very inviting space. So let's start with how we first met. Yes. Um, so we first met through uh, my friend Haley Reeves. Um, Haley originally started working for me after I met her walking my dog <laughs> down by the lake. And um, we kind of connected on the fact that both of us had lived in Australia. And I was like, hey, come and work for me. She was looking for a job, you know, part time. You can be my social media marketing coordinator. <laughs> um, sorry, my dog is over there chewing on a bone. So if you guys hear it, Luna, 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 Luna is also a guest <laughs> today. Um, I forgot to take her bone away. <laughs> but um, that was actually Luna is one of the reasons why me and Haley met was because, you know, we were walking the dogs. Haley was walking her dog. And yeah, so it was kind of met through that. And she kind of moved on. She worked for me a couple months, but she met you and kind of said, hey, I think that you guys would like to talk to each other. And we met for coffee. And yeah. Yeah, it was a kind of an awesome little chat, get to know each other, and agree to be on the podcast. Yeah, and you do amazing things for women, so definitely want to share what you're doing for the community. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about Mindful Matters Wellness? Yeah, so Mindful Matters Wellness is a holistic physical therapy practice, and we really focus on being that holistic physical therapy practice. We really focus on seeing even from if you're coming in for the shoulder, you're getting treated even for the toe. Everything is connected. We're looking at the kinetic chain. Um, and so outside of even the orthopedic kind of people who are coming in after the you know, weekend warriors or slip on the ice, uh, we really do niche into women's health and pelvic health. So people who are struggling with pelvic pain, painful intercourse, um, trying to get back after having a baby, um, all the kind of issues that come along with pregnancy, we specialize in that area. So we will work on the whole kind of body to get you back. Um, and that includes doing um, intravaginal and potentially interrectal work, which a lot of people are like, wait, what do you do? <laughs> um, so we really are looking to get all muscles back in order so that you can get back to doing all the things that you love. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to doing the physical therapy side of stuff, we also have our fitness studio. So we have four reformers, so we can do some small group, um, very intimate uh, reformer classes. We also do private, personal kind of one-on-one -on -one Pilates and yoga sessions. We also offer group yoga classes, which we cap off at 10 people. So everything's pretty intimate, small group. You really get that personalized attention. Um, and then we do community events and workshops and things like that. So that's what Mindful Matters Wellness is. <laughs> Very nice. And I know you talked a bit about your training to do all this pelvic floor work um, for individuals. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? It's very intensive, and it um, yes. <laughs> sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> so in order to get trained to be a pelvic, which most people don't realize, there's not a ton of us like out there. Um, and the reason why there isn't a ton of us out there is that you, in order to be a pelvic physical therapist, have to get the work done to yourself in the training. Mm -hmm. So that involves the intravaginal intrarectal work. So just as an example, if you are in like you go to this you go to the seminar, you are in a ballroom of a hotel <laughs> and you have massage tables all lined up and pretty much you are with a bunch of women. There are men who can take these classes, but they are kind of blocked off so they're not there's like curtains that separate. Um, they have to bring in a model or let's say if you're pregnant and you can't, or you have a doctor's note that says, hey, you can't do any of the work. You have to bring 
someone who is agreeing to let this be done to them. And you're just like all out in the open getting all the work done. So whether it's you're just sitting with your top off or bottoms off or whatever, and we try to drape as much as possible, and but it depends on what the person's comfort is. So it's kind of an interesting, interesting sight. If someone was like walking <laughs> into the ballroom, and it, granted, people watch the doors, so that doesn't happen. But mm-hmm. if someone was, they'd be like, what the heck is going on? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not something that everyone's comfortable with doing. Mm-hmm. So you have to kind of be a certain person to be like, yep, yeah, I'm, you know, this is, I see the need and I can get this done. I'm not going to lie. Again, I mean, it was, at first I was like, okay, this is a little intense, but I didn't have any, what I thought, I didn't have any pelvic floor issues. But as I've learned as a PT, the pelvic floor and your like deep rotators are all kind of connected. I didn't realize that even releasing through my pelvic floor, it helped my hip pain. I mean, it was like, oh my gosh, this is great. So I even got a benefit out of doing this myself, not even thinking that I had any issues. Um, So yeah, that's really kind of where you're going. You go into all kinds of stuff with the trainings. You get into, you know, bowel management, urinary, you know, bladder issues, and not just even with pelvic floor we're working with uterus and people for endometriosis I mean there's a ton of stuff that we can do um for people who are really struggling with pelvic pain or painful sex and all that kind of stuff yeah and that you've experienced it so Mm -hmm. now you can speak to it and so very extensive training we thank you for that so you can help (laughs) others (laughs) thanks for sharing so what are some of the other initiatives that you're currently working on? We are launching a kind of supplement website in addition to Mindful Matters Wellness, which is called whatthegap.com. Um, and this is going to provide like free resources for people looking for practitioners in, in regards to women's health, sexual education, um, reproductive education, like all, all of that kind of stuff. So really kind of that... Um, resource guide for people um as well as on the website we're we're designing a guide that is really pelvic health um oriented so if you are trying to get pregnant if you are pregnant if you're postpartum like how you can actually connect with your pelvic floor or retrain that pelvic floor um depending on like where you are in life even from menopause um so it's really we're focusing on that instead of it being like personal fitness, it's really a guy that is going to be connecting you to mm-hmm. the pelvis. And what type of supplements will you have on it too? Um, so we're going to have uh, free guides mm-hmm. that will be like, you know, do you like little, little tidbits of information, like how okay. to breathe, how to, yeah. um, you know, if you've got mm-hmm. pain or what, you know, we've got free different guides that, mm-hmm. um, information and tidbits and tips and stuff like that that they'll be able to be able to do as well as the resource resource guide will you be doing community workshops too with yeah absolutely um so really trying to reach even more Mm -hmm. out to the community I think one thing that a lot of physical therapists it's part of our job that I think a lot of the times we neglect is um like education community Mm -hmm. education and getting from getting to people at a preventative versus a rehabilitative like kind of mindset we can prevent a lot of stuff through education there's no need for people to have to go through a lot of traumas that can um occur in life but a lot of people don't you don't know what you don't know so it's just one of those things that we're trying to get people to know more Mm -hmm. in order to prevent um prevent stuff that's really unnecessary yeah yeah um, and is it true that you've been witness to 500 local births in Milwaukee? Uh, that's Coral. Coral. Has been, okay. Yeah, Coral. So okay. she's a doula. So she has mm-hmm. been to 500 different births in Milwaukee, mm-hmm. um, 500 plus. Wow. Um, and so that's why I'm really excited to bring her on mm-hmm. um, to teaching the birth education class that is just because she has so much knowledge. Um her seminar, so or her like workshop, it's eight eight weeks long, and then I teach, which I thought was great to partner with. I teach then a workshop that's kind of like the skills portion. So there's mm-hmm. a lot of her demonstrating and um, 
teaching and lecturing to what to expect while you're expecting. Um, and then I get my hands on the couples as well as, um, Lauren, we're both going to be doing this workshop, um, and teaching them how to actually like manage body mechanics and, you know, laboring is a long process. Mm -hmm. And so how can your laboring partner assist you? And so instead of just like winging it on the day of, you actually get the practical skills and the communication skills of, hey, this feels good, this doesn't, push harder, don't push hard, you know, Mm -hmm. all of this. They can really kind of dive into it so that they feel truly like ready mm-hmm. I mean labor as and delivery is gonna yeah as much as possible it's gonna throw you. there's a yeah. lot of curveballs that can happen mm-hmm. but at least they feel the partners can sometimes feel like oh, I don't I didn't really know what to do mm-hmm. but this gives them a couple you know tools in their toolbox to whip them out as needed um and feel like okay I at least knew that I was being supportive in a comforting way instead of like guessing is this comforting or is this not Mm because they've already practiced it and they know okay she likes us (laughs) yeah so Mm -hmm. yeah very cool so is there a specific event or experience in your personal journey that led you to where you are today yeah I think um being a pelvic and women's health specialist I think I was always kind of interested in women's health um my I'm one of five children and my younger brother, he's almost 13 years younger than me. My mom was 41 when she had him and Mm -hmm. she had almost died (laughs) giving birth to him. So it was very, I remember just like being at the hospital and being like, oh my gosh, you know, she ended up having a hysterectomy after, um, after having him. And so we really had to, as a family kind of come to, I mean, we loved my, he was like the cutest little baby. <laughs> um, he's like a little doll. Uh, but kind of being around all that information and seeing that from an age that I was like, I really understood all the stuff that was going on. Um, it kind of sparked this interest in all of what women go through, um, kind of at a young age. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I was in PT school, we got like one little weekend, maybe not even, it was like a four hour like seminar on women's health stuff. And I remember like, wow, this is like so interesting. But out of all of the scope of stuff that you learn, it was like four hours that they talked about this. And I was like, you know, gosh, I wish I kind of did more, but they were like, not everyone wants to do it. So it's something that you have to do post graduate. And I remember being in that they were talking about some of the stuff that you would do. And a coccyx mobilization was one of them. And it was like, in order to do this coccyx mobilization, you have to stick your finger up someone's butt and to release the... And I remember everyone being like, oh my God, never would I ever. And I was sitting there like, I mean, I've like, I've hurt my tailbone. And if that would have given me relief. I probably <laughs> would have done it too. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know why everyone is being so weird about it. Like mm-hmm. I, it's just the body. I'm like, so, you know, here we had just spent time. We'd done cadaver labs and dissecting yeah. and all of this. And I'm like, what's like, like you thought you think that like, I didn't understand why people were so flustered by it. Mm-hmm. But I think that was a test to, you know, not everyone is cut out for it. Mm-hmm. And I was just one of those people who was like, yeah, sure. Cool. I'm interested. Didn't phase you. Yeah. It didn't phase <laughs> me. So let's go. Um, and just everything that I've gone through as a PT, I was a traveling physical therapist. I've really explored a lot of different, um, different areas that you can practice in. Um, and I, decided that in order to practice the way that I wanted to practice, I needed to open up my own location um, and opening up my own location and getting all the trainings and the Pilates and the yoga and tapping into a more holistic um, method of treatment, slowing down your treatments and like really giving that person time to heal. Like time is super important. It just led me, all of the continuing education just kind of led me into the pelvic and women's health kind of realm. And I'm so glad that I did it. And I like 
never regret it. I'm only looking forward. I, I am obsessed with the continuing education and you know, what else can I learn even, um, within that area because it's just so fa- It's so fascinating. It really is. Mm-hmm. I wish more people knew about it, but that's why I'm trying to educate more yeah, people so about here. it. <laughs> yeah. And I learned a lot just from yeah. speaking to you the first time. Yeah. I had no idea about all these other muscles and you know, I yep. just had no idea. <laughs> yeah. The pelvic so. floor is just like your bicep. Like it can mm-hmm. cramp up. It can get tight. It could be weak. It could be need to get massaged. You know, like there's, mm-hmm. it's just like any other muscle. And a lot of us don't like to think of it like that because there is a sexual connotation with how to get to those muscles. Mm-hmm. It's like, eh, it's, it's not like that at all. I, me personally, and I know not everyone were like, Oh, it's so different. And I'm like, you go to a dentist and dentist is inside your mouth. Like, I, like yeah. I, mm-hmm. I've got no, that's how I, I view going, doing the internal work. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah definitely. But yeah. And you have like a very like nice inviting mm-hmm. space, um, where it's not sterile, like a typical doctor's office. I yeah. think people would feel more comfortable working with you. Yeah. So I'll, sense, so I have a pretty soft massage table. I will put I then have a loose lamb's wool um, cover that goes over it, um, as well as then like flannel or massage sheets. I have little lighted candles that I put on. I get the essential oils going. So I'm really trying to make it as comfortable as possible mm-hmm. because it is, you know, a lot of women do get embarrassed by doing it because it's like, hey, you got your hand in a really interesting area and we're talking about what I did over the weekend. You know, like it's... Mm-hmm. it. So I want them to feel as comfortable as possible so that, one, their nervous system can relax, so they can get a better benefit out of the treatment, and then, two, it takes away that, like, it's weird because it's, you know, my mm-hmm. vagina. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, like it's it takes that away so that they're just like, okay, like, I'm trying to normalize it more mm-hmm. into a very comforting setting so you're just more relaxed. So that was my, I did not want a sterile environment. I did not, I really mm-hmm. wanted people to feel that this was a place of um, comfort, of safety, of um, healing. Yeah, it's very warm too, so mm-hmm. temperature wise. And yeah. yeah, it feels more like a yoga studio or massage yeah. Yeah. place than a doctor's office. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So that, was, that was the goal. So appreciate <laughs> you thinking that. <laughs> So what are the short-term and long-term goals you have to improve uh, wellness in women's lives? I know you touched upon some of that with the new website coming yep. out. Are there any others you want to share? Um, I mean, we have even, like anything, <laughs> we were talking about this a little bit earlier. As a physical therapist, I'm super trained in clinical aspect of things. But I'm a business owner. I'm always trying to learn how to do all the marketing and do all the whatever and do Mm -hmm. I, you know, I built my website. I did, you know, I do the marketing. I do all that. And it's a lot to learn how to do all that Mm -hmm. stuff. Yes. I build websites too. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, You know, and and it's, so, you know, I mean, it is, it's tough. And if you don't have a background in it, it's a Mm -hmm. lot of watching YouTube videos and do it and up late at night because Mm -hmm. I don't have time to do it. You know, I'm treating people (laughs) during the day. Um, So short term goals, obviously, for me is I just in addition to the website and doing even for the the new website, Mindful Matters Wellness. I mean, we already have a clientele base, but even getting those people even more educated and stuff. So like getting our newsletter even more, (laughs) more prevalent and Mm -hmm. and regular and, you know, like just getting some stuff out like that. MailChimp is like, I don't know. I that's one of those things that I. I struggle with MailChimp. I don't know why. I just, I sit down and then I try to figure it out and I get stuff going and then I'm like, whatever. (laughs) I got to come back to it. And then I feel like I start over from square one. So, I mean, there is definitely in order to help women in wellness for me, short term, it's kind of figuring out a little bit more of how to get the information out there in a way that is not overbearing, pretty receptive. And so working on that, um, from like a short, short term perspective, but that's more from like a <laughs> from business, business standpoint. Yeah. I'm going to be honest about it. I'm not gonna, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's tough owning, it's tough owning a business. And mm-hmm. so I've got to think over like everything yeah. as to how can I best reach people? And right now that's kind mm-hmm. of my focus on short term. 
but for long term, what's your, your long term? Obviously, I really, really want to have a space that is. This is like my kind of would be a little bit more of my passion project is getting a space that is solely for fertility. Um, there is a place down in Chicago called Pulling Down the Moon, and it really is an amazing um, place for people to get information and services for their struggles in fertility. Um, and you are not allowed to come in to the space if you are pregnant or bring a baby in afterwards in order to give the space for the women who struggled with loss um, and are struggling with trying. Because it can be really hard for someone who has had a miscarriage um, at any stage within their pregnancy um, or struggling to get pregnant to then see other people who are pregnant and see the baby, you know, like mm-hmm. it's a, it's kind of like a stab in the heart every time that that happens. And, but there's a whole psychological component that goes into that trying to get pregnant if, especially if you're struggling. Um, and I want to kind of fill that void and to have a really safe space for people who like, having just serve you know whether it's pt for fertility or massage for fertility or um nutrition for fertility you know like just just a fertility center that people can come to and not have to feel like embarrassed if they're crying or angry or you know i want them to have a safe space in our city instead of having to like travel you know hours in mm-hmm. order to get something very similar. So that's really kind of like long-term. Like I would love to have a couple locations with one in particular for fertility, um, fertility kind of niche. But yeah, it's a really great goal. Yeah. (laughs) So what does wellness mean to you? Um, wellness to me, I think it, it means a couple things. Um, wellness to me, it means having a, a balance, a balance in your work life, a balance in happiness to sadness. Um, I think that a lot of people want to say like, hey, I have to be happy all the time in order to be well. Um, I think it's very okay to express all of your feelings. I think even as women, a lot of the time we're shut down on like, oh, you shouldn't be angry or you shouldn't be sad or, you know we get put into certain, certain labels. And I think, no, our emotions should be able to be expressed fully. You can't always just be happy. It's really, because if you're always happy, you don't have the perspective of being sad. Like, how do you know if you're happy if you don't have a perspective of being sad? Um, but you shouldn't always be sad either, you know, like having a balance of, or angry or whatever, express your emotion, but allow that emotion to be expressed in order to balance it out with then like the letting go of, of that emotion and and moving on. Um, another thing of wellness I would think is, uh, to me is consistency. So being consistent with yourself, not in everything, but like finding things that are really important to you. So if, like fitness is super important to you, like be consistent in your fitness. If eating well is important to you, be consistent with eating well. If sleep is important to you, be consistent in your sleep routine. Finding that consistency in order to make it a routine, integrate it into your life, and then being honest about how all of this is going. Okay, I didn't get to do that. I'm honest with myself that, okay, you know, it didn't it didn't work out today. Oh, well being honest with yourself in your emotions. How is that, how is that making you feel? Um, and then forgiveness. I think wellness is forgiveness. So much of the time you have to forgive yourself. We put a lot of expectation on, on who we should be, what we are and all that stuff. And just like, it's okay. You are who you are. If like, like give yourself a break. That is what wellness is, is, is cutting yourself some slack but still also allowing yourself to like move forward and progress and, and whatever is important to you. Um, you know, for me in particular, it is getting good sleep. It is, you know, getting my little dose of exercise daily. I like those endorphins. It's eating healthy. Um, 
spending time with my dog, you know, like in my family and, and all that stuff. But, you know, it, it, that's kind of like my, my idea of what wellness is. It's kind of a whole. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is one wellness ritual that you do daily or weekly that you'd like to encourage listeners to incorporate into their lives? I would say my wellness routine is diaphragmatic breathing. Um, so that 360 degree breath, uh, not belly breathing. I think a lot of people think diaphragmatic breathing is belly breathing. Um, but breathing into like front of the ribs, side of the ribs, back of the ribs, taking that full deep breath, letting go of tension. Um, I literally have been doing diaphragmatic breathing since I was like as long as I can remember. Um, I am someone who I don't get frustrated very much at other people. I'm someone who's very hard on myself. I get really frustrated in my, (laughs) what I think are my like deficiencies or, oh, I can't, you know, like I, I'm not smart enough. I'm you know, like those, that negative thought process that can kind of come in, it can spiral. And so, my parents realized this from a very young age that I could wind myself kind of up into my own head and then get frustrated with myself and I'd be crying or I'd be upset or I'd be angry and my parents would say Jennifer you need to take three deep breaths and they would sit with me and I would have to take three deep the diaphragmatic breaths and by the third breath they'd be like how are you feeling and I always felt better because I took the time to like stop pause get my mind off of whatever was frustrating me or making me sad or you know had just wound me up and it distracted me from that for even a brief moment and that brief moment is sometimes all you need in order to give yourself a different perspective so that started like super young. That was before, you know, yoga and all that stuff. That was just a technique that my parents implored on me as a very, I mean, like three-year-old. All right, Jennifer, sit, you know, sit on the, st- the step. Let's take three deep breaths. And it was the only thing that like really calmed me down. Um, and now being a practitioner in physical therapy, I now know, okay, you're stimulating your vagal nerve. You're tapping into your parasympathetic nervous system. Like all of that deep breathing, you're letting go of tension in the shoulders of the jaw and the forehead, you know, letting that stuff go is like really important when you're feeling like, Hey, I'm, I'm too up and I'm pointing to my head. (laughs) I'm tapping my head Mm -hmm. too up into my head or even I'm too into my heart and I need just a second And so I like really, I suggest everyone learn how to diaphragmatically breathe because it not only will help you mentally, it'll help you physically. Um, If you're in pain, physical or mental, it kind of just gives you a moment to say, okay, pause, let me think. And then I can move forward. So that's kind of my, my routine that I would say I take every single day there's a moment where I'm just taking a pause and it, maybe it's just three breaths, but I would rather have three really good breaths and a moment to like give myself a, (laughs) give myself a break and then a a starting point again. Um, then to not have, then to not have it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's mine. Are there any um, books or apps you'd recommend that can help with that? Or Yeah, so with the diaphragmatic breathing, I would encourage some people, it's really hard. I mean, I'm saying like diaphragmatic breathing. It's, you know, letting go of tension and all that stuff. A lot of people don't know how to breathe. They don't know how to let go of that tension. Um, and there's this really great app out there called Insight Timer. I don't know. I've yeah. Heard of that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love Insight Timer, mm-hmm. and they have free – like guided meditations, um, progressive relaxation, breathing, you know, you can get onto this thing. And if you just even want some like free music to put in the background while you're working or relaxing, you can do that. If you want this meditation kind of aspect, you can, um, use insight timer. Um, I recommend it to my patients all the time just because I'm like, I use it personally. So does, um, Lauren, the other PT, we just like, we personally use it and Mm we, really enjoy it so I really would recommend that's like my favorite 
right now that's like my favorite app in order to help with that um so yeah it's definitely a good one yeah mm-hmm. what is your personal mantra or theme song that kind of gets you into a good state of mind to start your day or kind of redirects your mindset so I would say probably my like my <laughs> my theme song that has been my theme song since like middle school <laughs> has been Bohemian Rhapsody okay <laughs> Um, I am, there is something about that song that it comes on and I am just like, I have, it's a long song. I don't even, it I should long. know. I shouldn't, I should know how long like it is minutes, just for how, how many, mm-hmm. it's like, nah, it's like six minutes or something like maybe <laughs> even longer. It's a really long, it's a really long song. I should know for how much I listen to this song. Um, there's something about it. It's this like lead up. I know all the words I can like fully get into it. I'm out. I will straight up headbang to the sound. Like when it comes out, I will do the headbang. Like I will get fired up off of this song. Um, and it's been like that. It, I don't know. just brings me joy to hear it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it brings back like memories of all the times that I've sung it with all of my friends and karaoke did, or I don't know what it is, but it, I, I, that's like my, my, pump up song Mm -hmm. um I will say lately though that circles by post Malone when that song comes on right now I am just like yeah let's do this (laughs) (laughs) let's do I have been listening to that song as well probably it's on one of my playlists and I probably I make sure to listen to that at least like once in the afternoon Mm -hmm. just to be like there's something about the rhythm of it (laughs) I used to be I was a, a dancer in a past life and so I really appreciate um beats and mm-hmm. rit- you know like yeah. I, I really can I it doesn't really necessarily have to be about the lyrics like there's sometimes like if just even oh the, yeah just you the, connect with the rhythm yeah the mm-hmm. rhythm of the song yeah. um because honestly I don't even really know it's circles by post Malone what it's <laughs> even about I, I just really I listen to like the the, the I don't know the instrumentals mm-hmm. and the, like and it's yeah it, it just kind of mm-hmm. gets it gets me going so that's kind of been my a good right, one. my good one and then the, the just breathe that's mm-hmm. my that's my daily just mantra breathe. just okay. breathe yeah I like that so yeah <laughs> very great so how can listeners reach you um listeners can reach me by going to um our website at uh mindfulmatterswellness.com all of our information is there via phone fax <laughs> if you are interested in getting an appointment or learning more we offer free um 20 minute consultations where people can come in they can request those consultations online obviously they can reach us via phone and um email uh but they can also fill out a request form on our website as well great yeah. well i appreciate you being on the show today and sharing all the ways you're helping women so thank you again yeah, and thank thanks you. everyone for listening yeah. when I look into your eyes, I'm